Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada brings the power of engineering and her smarts to bring you, yes, you, something that it would be great to search for, and it would be great if you could find it, and it's going to be great. Okay. Do it. So I saw this come by. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't actually like spec any parts this week. Um, but then I go and look at what like DigiKey's talking about to see if there's any, um, you know, like great search content there. And they did this like little hack of like, okay, you know, you can, um, if you have a TO220 and you want to cool it down. And this actually reminded me, um, so one thing that is definitely true about, that you, you bump into quite quickly is, you know, you have something like your T, T, uh, your LM7805 in a TO220 package. And, you know, the data sheet and the documentation sort of imply like, oh, you can get one and a half amps out of this at five volts up to like, I don't know, nine, 12, 15 volts input. But because it's linear, that is not actually true. Because if you actually like do the math, like let's say you're, you're, um, you have a nine volt input and you want five volt output. So if there's a four volt drop and you want to you know, multiply that by... 1.5 amps that's six watts and you cannot on its own dissipate six watts out of this in fact a to 220 unheat sunken can basically give you about like one watt maybe half a watt so you could do you know like half an amp maybe um or you know a quarter and maybe you could do little spikes of a half an amp but you will quickly overheat the dye inside but what's nice is that there is this big tab, this metal heat sink tab that you can attach a heat sink to. And so on that little video, they showed like, oh, take a little like bulldog binder clip and you clip it on. And it's like that, that will give you like a little bit um, of, of heat sinky capability. And you can probably get like a like, couple milliamps more, but you can also just go digi and get like a proper heat sink. So let's go you to- You could. You could. So Why would you do, want to do that? Because uh, it's the great search. Yeah. So if we search for you could do it wrong the first time and then be like, ah, fine, I'll great search. Well, this is a common thing because people are like, well, you know, they, they wire it up and they're like, well, the data sheet says I can get an amp and a half, but when I actually use it to power my solenoid, um, my system shuts down. Or the, spherical cow. Or spherical cow. Spherical what? cow. I was, um, I was talking to someone who works at Amazon. Yeah. And I think I'm going to compete with them because, you know, it's a very big logistical problem sending all these packages all over the place. Right. And I said, I'm just going to send logistical cow packages because every... Oh, sorry, it's your cow package because every mathematician has solved this. You just make the packages look like cows. Hmm. Thank Problem you. Solved. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're here. So heat sinks. So there's five quadrillion heat sinks. We've come at other heat sinks, um, but in particular, let's look for active and let's look for in stock only because it's just, you know, we're going to look for ones that you can get right now. Let's ignore um, marketplace products. And then, you know, you can start looking. And actually, ironically, you know, some of the most popular ones are the TO220 because to be honest, uh, you know, it's very hard when you have SMT, like CPUs, you know, you can, you can have heat sinks. But um, TO220s are a very common package that needs heat sinks because they're, they're designed to dissipate a lot of heat through a heat sink and it's easy to attach one. So well, let's find, let's, but let's filter out everything else. Uh, so that what we want to do is look for package cooled. So going up to package cooled, uh, you know, there's tons of options here. So let's look for TO220. And um, so TO220, there's a couple of packages that are similar enough or they are similarly named or they can do multiple ones. So we'll just select all of these and apply them. And that gives us, I think, like, you know, 380 options. So that's kind of nice to, to see. So a lot of options and you're probably like, well, how do I know which to get? And the answer is usually you have to do the back calculation of what wattage are you trying to dissipate and then figure out how much, um, what is the resistance that you need? And the lower the resistance, the, um, more power dissipation. So some of them actually have a little bit of a, like a, um, cheat sheet here. Like they do give you the, uh, degree C per watt of, of temperature rise, um, or the thermal resistance. And you can plug that into a calculator. You know, there's, there's calculators that do that. 
um, the, you know, the wattage is fine. One thing you'll notice is like, okay, this one is five watts, for example, if we scroll all the way. It's like, you know, this is a pretty chunky power um, uh, heat sink. So, you know, they can get like very, very intense. Let's, uh, let's, let's reshift this because I do, I do like seeing the, um, let's see, thermal resistance. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll grab this one. I have multiple monitors. So power dissipation. So let's put that over here. I don't really care about the package so much. And I don't really care about the series or the tariff status or the type. And they're all going to be active. So let's, let's look at this. So we're looking at price and the power dissipation. So um, it's the smaller ones, the ones that clip on, that don't bolt on, there's are going to be less expensive. You know, as you get to um, these really big molded ones, like, you know, or, um, extruded ones, they're going to cost more. They're going to cost two, three, four dollars. You can get, you know, something that can handle 20 watts. Like sometimes you'll get chips. Like I've seen um, audio amplifiers that use or, or uh, power supplies or motor drivers. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can like get like five amps, 10 amps through this chip. OK, sure. But you have to dissipate that heat. You'll want something beefy like this. We can even. Um, I think if we do sort high, low, yeah, you know, these are like massive, massive heat sinks. Like if you think about how big this is like, you know, it's, it's very chunky. However, I think for something like a, a TO220, you know, you don't need something that intense. Um, I will say that these little clips, they kind of barely, you have to bolt them on. I find them to be really minimal. Um, they do work if you just need a little bit of heat sinking, but the one that I really think is the bomb, and this one says, bomb for your bomb. Bomb for, this one says four Watts. I, I don't know, maybe I've never used this, but the one that I really like that I've used and had very good luck with is, is this one, which is, um, this kind of, it's large, but it clips on and bolts on very easily. And uh, you can see there's like a hole for bolting it on and it has like a nice dissipation shape. It is a little bit big, but it's also fairly inexpensive, which is why there's so many in stock. So for 30 cents, honestly, I have like five of these just like kicking around and they, they have a little retainer clip here. You can see, so you can clip it on. You don't have to bolt it. You can clip it on to see if it's working. And then if you do, you know, you want better, a little bit more heat sinking, you, um, you bolt it on. But I like this one. Um, it's jelly bean. I've seen it from a couple different uh, manufacturers, but right now it, you know, Digiki has 25,000 in stock from Boyd Laconia for 30 cents. Like this will solve a lot of your heat sinking issues. And then if you really need more wattage, get one of those really big extruded ones, but they're going to be like a couple bucks a piece. So yeah, I've used this in, in multiple kits and uh, I really like this part. All right. That's a great church. Where in the world is